So today we will be discussing limiting beliefs and where they actually originate. So let's review again how the mind works. So we have our conscious mind, which reasons and analyzes and decides what to believe. And we also have our subconscious mind that simply does what it's told or what it has learned from previous experiences and works really hard to keep us in familiar territory. So we can also think of our conscious mind as our gardener planting the seeds through our thoughts and our subconscious mind as the garden reaping what is sown, whether good or bad. Now we use our conscious mind when we're learning something new, but our automated behaviors are coming from our subconscious minds and our subconscious minds are running the show about 95% of the time. Therefore, it's important to understand what our subconscious mind responds to. So Lisa, can you share a little bit about what you have actually learned and what you teach on this topic? Sure. So basically our subconscious mind responds to both auto-suggestion and hetero-suggestion. So auto-suggestion is suggestion from self and hetero-suggestion is suggestion from others. So this could be peers, parents, or the media. So let's discuss heterosuggestion first. Again, this is suggestion from outside influences. So we can imagine peer pressure in middle school or high school. Suddenly things that you previous like to wear or do now become uncool. You may not be told to change outright, but you begin to take notice of what others are wearing and doing and subconsciously adapt to those patterns. Another example is the media. You can watch a commercial and decide consciously whether to purchase a product, but think about the subliminal messages as well as the overall length of exposure to the media that you have during the day. I can tell you, Lisa, when I'm participating in food detox and happen to watch media, I really noticed how many food commercials are presented during this, uh, you know, like a single program. It's like you're ultra focused. And I, I actually laugh at all the, you know, sexy, seductive women eating a big fat burger that's big enough to last like a week. And maybe it's a, you know, over the top example, but it illustrates, you know, your point. You know, or let's talk about the sheer volume of some of the prescription commercials that are out there. Have you ever, you know, seen some of those where you're like, you know, if you, you know, it's the girl on the swing, if you suffer from, you know, blah, 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 then you may need X, Y, Z or, you know, whatever. So, you know, there's a lot of examples out there of exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. And I think about like the trance like state that we can get in when we watch TV. I mean, that's a perfect time for messages to bypass our, our guard dog conscious mind and head straight to the subconscious mind. And then once the messages are in our subconscious mind, they tend to become auto suggestions or the stories that we actually tell ourselves. In The Voice of Knowledge by Don Miguel Ruiz, he illustrates how heterosuggestion from others becomes autosuggestion eventually. It then alters the stories we tell ourselves. He mentions that when we are mature enough for abstract thoughts, we begin to quantify things as right or wrong or good or bad or beautiful or ugly. And then the stories that we tell ourselves begin. So we not only learn from the words of our parents, teachers or preachers and caretakers, we also learn from silent messages or messages from the words that are spoken about others. Yeah, so the, these stories that you're mentioning are actually oftentimes limiting beliefs. Our parents and you know, other caretakers, teachers, you know, whoever say that you know, we're, we aren't as good as another, but you know, something in their speech or behavior lead us to believe that we aren't just, we aren't good enough. And we begin to seek perfection and feel like we don't measure up and compare. And, you know, this is the birth of where limiting beliefs come from. And they begin at a very young age and could be the result of something as simple as like a sibling allowed dessert for finishing their dinner, you know, when you didn't. And that may not seem very traumatic, but it could be for, you know, someone young, impressionable, and like a toddler. Trauma is relative and relative to our age, our brain development, and even some of our life circumstances. 
Yeah, that's a great point, Dina. I used to get annoyed at all the messages that, you know, all of our problems seem to stem from childhood trauma. And I was kind of adamant that I didn't have childhood trauma and that digging out rep repressed memories would be of little help to my present day life. In fact, consciously, I felt like pretty, you know, happy, capable, sufficiently confident. But as I began to pay more attention to my passive mind and the stories going on there, I realized that something formed those stories. Mm -hmm. So it could be something as small as maybe I wanted to tell my mom something and she happened to be on the phone. I mean, who knows what was traumatic in our formative years? It doesn't sound traumatic to us now. Um, so we could have amazing parents, caretakers, and still have taken away messages that we were not enough. So we don't even have to dig into those childhood memories. Like I never have to figure out what, you know, gave me the story I tell myself. Um, we just want to acknowledge what's going on in our passive minds so that we can get to better thought patterns. Yeah, so true. You know, to sum it up, you know, we nearly all have limiting beliefs of some kind, some sort. And if you watch our video on manifesting and begin to experiment with manifesting, you will likely be able to identify some of your limiting beliefs easily. But also, you know, check out some of our other conversations on purging. We have very simple tools for you, even some on habit forming as well, making that very, very simple and easy to do. And hopefully you can become more carefree, empowered, healthy, light with far less toxicity stress and overwhelm. Uh, Lisa and I have absolutely enjoyed helping you shift and purge, and we look forward to hearing about your journey through this process. Share what you plan to incorporate moving forward.